In this tutorial, we are going to review the Photo Merge Exposure tool in Photoshop Elements. I'm not sure when they added this. I think it was around version 8, um, but I'm not positive. And I've never used this or really played with it before now. A lot of those things um, that they have for quick fixes and automation in Photoshop Elements I don't utilize because I am so used to doing them and teaching how to do them manually. And so I have here two photos which I've taken. Um, they're kind of soft. I At first I didn't like them because they weren't sharp. I've always liked sharp images. and um, But these were actually kind of uh, soft and I kind of liked that dreamy feel. But this one was taken at a uh, plus 0.7 exposure and this one was taken at normal exposure. So we have brighter and uh, normal exposure compensation. So we have two differently exposed photos opened up and if you go to File, New, and then Photo Merge Exposure you can see there's a, a lot of things here for Photo Merge. Um, the only one I've ever really liked a lot was this panorama. But let's play with the exposure one. We have two different exposures. It says please select control click from 1 to 10 photos in the project bin then choose photo merge exposure again or select open all. Well I have two in there so I'm going to open them all. And um, here is the automatic smart blending results that it's come up with. There are three areas, three different levels in here that you can utilize. You have simple blending, um, which only gives you this saturation slider control. So if I want well, hmm. it doesn't let me, it did earlier, <laughs> let me move that slider, but it was the only one that let me move because these are grayed out. Uh, or the smart blending, which allows you to use all three of these sliders. And if you want to bring in more of the highlight detail from the overexposed image, you can move this slider up and watch it make changes out here. Go maybe a little more drastic. I didn't see a whole lot of change. If you want to darken or lighten the shadows, um, maybe bring in more from that underexposed image. You can see here that they're not really lined up perfectly. I can see an edge around it, or you can saturate it. Now this here, um, you oversaturate it too much. You can see how it's getting grainy and pixelated out here. Um, not, not a good thing. And didn't work very well, so I'm going to drop it back down. I still see a lot of pixelation in here. And uh, you can click Done and then it's going to open it in the full editor okay and so here it brings it up in the full editor mode and it has the background layer and a layer one and if you toggle between the two you can um, see the fixed image. Also we can look here is an original, a lighter, and a combined. I don't know. Let's do this. Window images um, tile and we can kind of see a little bit better. Here is the um, darker and the lighter and then the two put together 
and I don't really see where it's done a whole lot. The um, it does look like it's pulled in a lot of the darker blues from the background and pulled in a lot of the highlights from the yellow flowers so it did do um, some uh, good on here and if we zoom in we can see oh, zoomed in too much though that we do have a lot of pixelation in here. I'm only at 74 percent and so it, it didn't and then of course the images were not lined up up here so we got a line all the way around which is kind of cool too. So let's close that out and we're going to do this again. File New Photo Merge Exposure and we opened up both images in here again and this time we're going to look at the manual and how it works. So if you click on there and in this case you do need to open up your project bin. You know I have this um, love-hate thing with the project bin and um, it says to begin by dragging a photo here from the project bin and drop it in as the background image. This is going to be the image that you want um, it to uh, be the final image. This is going to be the image that you want to draw colors from into this one. And so um, let's say we're going to start with the darker one and I'm going to put it in there. Oops, and then I'm going to click on this one to bring it in as the foreground color and then over here you have your tools. You have a selection tool and an eraser and we have show strokes which is going to be the strokes that we make with the selection tool. So I'm going to get the selection tool and go over here, I'm going to make it a little bit larger and select the areas over here that I want to go over into this darker image. So basically um, since this is the lighter photo, I want to select those things that are lighter that I want to go over there. So I'm going to select that area and maybe some of the, um, and you can see it making changes over here, but it makes drastic changes just with those two changes you can see here that it does not do a very good job. Look at the choppiness over here. Um, one of the reasons is because the images are not lined up so let's go ahead and play with that. Um, down here we have advanced options that you can open up and we have an alignment tool and it's going to throw three markers out there. Now we can put these markers in the exact same spot on each photo. So here I am, let's uh, go back and turn off the strokes so that I can see. Throw, whoops, reset. Ah, let's try again. Um, we're going to throw this one out there align. We have this one. And I'm going to put it up here at the tippy top of this and right here at the tippy bottom. Is there such a thing as a tippy bottom of the petals? And then when I'm done you can see that it comes over here and I have to remember where I put them. I put one here and here and here and then we're going to click align photos and then it aligned the two photos. Oh, I, when I move my mouse back and forth it, it shows where those markers were so if I needed to fix them maybe I could. Now we're going to go up and get that selection tool again. I'm trying to zoom out. It won't let me zoom out and see if it does a little bit better job. Oh, see, and it it chose to, um, let's show those strokes again, chose to bring in some of this background 
and here is the region it chose. So you can see it doesn't do a very good job. It, it, it chose way more than it should have. I'm going to just do a little bit of this and you can see that it just did not calculate that very well. So um, even after I lined up the images it didn't do too well. Uh, you can um, lower the transparency to make the effect a little bit better and when you get done click done so I'm not fascinated with the manual mode if I'm going to be doing masking like that I'm going to be doing masking that I can actually really do by adding a layer mask <laughs> but um, this is our uh, final image here you can see the areas where they made it brighter right in here but it looks too tedious and um, difficult for me to do and so it would work better I think maybe if you had and I haven't even tried this two images like these let's go do these Okay, I'm going to close out these others. So we only have these two images open. And I have this one where the exposure <coughs> got the flowers and the vases really well. And I have this one where it got outside the window very well. So if we go to the photo merge exposure this time it might work a little bit better when you have photos that are a little bit more definitive it's not really going to I don't think this is really good at making HDR photos and actually blending exposures very well um, so we're going to go in here <coughs> and I think this time I'm going to bring this one over and then make this one my cha challenge Let's uh, go um, align them. Got three markers. So I'm going to put one right where these meet, right where that meets, and maybe right where that meets, and then do the same here. I forgot what I did right in there. Of course, you'd probably want to zoom in to do this. I, I'm not wanting to be that particular and align photos. Let's see what it does. Ah, made that one all crookedy. See, I don't like this tool. But just for the sake of playing, we're going to use the selection tool and I'm going to select this area of the window. Oh, it actually put it in there where something wasn't before and so if you have better photos that are lined better I don't think these two are actually um, lined up very well it did actually a pretty good job it brought in that window and defined it and then kept this area here and so it actually did a pretty good job overall so when you have something that of course we've got this down in here and I probably could have done this so much easier with just the masking tools <laughs> but uh, you do see how it helped to bring out uh, um, what was out the window and what was in the foreground together so uh, you have to pick good images to do this for it's not really for HDR blending it's um, where you have like a bright sky in the background that's blown out and the people in the front are dark and then in the next one the sky um, is dark and the people are looking good and you can um, easily like grab that sky and get it in there so that's what this tool is more for it's not really for uh, blending HDR if I wanted to uh, actually blend it I would actually use the layer masks and the blending modes
So that is this tutorial.